welcome to another Photoshop editing tutorial. In this video we are going to fix this northern light landscape shot from the Lofoten in Norway. This means we are going to fix the white balance, try to fix the overexposed highlights in the foreground and just apply a little bit of color grading and some other things. This one will be a little more complicated than usual, but if you want to follow along you can find all the raw files needed in the description of the video. And now without much more talking, let's begin. First off, the raw adjustments. Down there you can see the two images I will be using, with this one being the base shot and I'm going to use this image just for the highlights right there in the foreground. Now let's first work on the base image. I'm not going to change the profile this time, but right away I do want to adjust the white balance, because at the moment you can see this image has a super strong yellow color cast which looks very strange. To fix that, the first thing I'm doing is to simply bring down the temperature and just give this image a more natural look this way. That looks pretty good already. At the same time I do want to bring down the tint very slightly, introducing some more green tones. But I'm pretty happy with this look so far. Now let's work on the exposure. The first thing I want to do is to bring down the highlights quite a bit just to bring them a little more in line with the rest of the image. And I'm also going to increase the blacks slightly just to reveal some more details in those dark areas. But I don't really care for the very darks, for example, in the bottom left corner, because this area is just not that important. At this point, due to those two adjustments, we are going to lose a bit of contrast. So to fix that, let's just bring up the contrast slightly. Perfect. And then I'm also going to increase the texture just to add a little more sharpness and I'm also going to increase clarity which will also help with the contrast. Perfect, looking much better. Of course we want this image to be a little more saturated so let's bring up the vibrance for that. And here we have the image after just a few base adjustments. Compared to before you can see it's looking much better with a lot more detail and just more natural color tones. At this point I do want to focus a little more on the sky, especially on the northern lights. So let's head into the masking menu. Here we can just simply use the sky selection. Photoshop shouldn't have a hard time selecting the sky in this image. As you can see right here, there's a bit of mountain selected as well, but I don't think that matters that much. In here, what I want to do is to bring up the highlights can see this will make the northern lights a little more visible. I'm also going to increase the whites for the same purpose. Then I do want to further work on the colors, therefore I'm using those white balance sliders and just bring down the temperature even further as well as the tint which will add some more green tones to the sky. Perfect. We could also play around with the saturation, increasing it a bit. Let's head down to those effect sliders and I'm going to increase the clarity by dropping the texture just a bit to make this area a little smoother up there. But I think that's looking pretty good so far for the masking stuff. Then at this point let's do a little bit of color grading. I'm going to head into the color mixer first. Not going to change the hue because I like how the colors look but I do want to change the saturation. This means I am bringing down the orange colors. I'm also bringing down the yellow tones and instead just raise the blue tones a bit. Overall, I do want this image to look a bit colder so it makes sense to have a stronger blue and green color presence going on instead of those warmer color tones in the foreground. But we might change that later in Photoshop. For the next step, however, let's open up the luminance tab here I do want to bring up the green luminance which will make the northern lights slightly brighter. I'm also going to increase the aqua luminance for the same effect. And that's looking pretty good so far. Then we can also go into the color grading for the split toning. Let's start with the shadows and just go on and apply a cold color tone for the shadows. Then let's bring up the saturation slightly. I think this looks really really good. Now for the midtones, I'm doing the same thing with the cold color tone. And let's bring up the saturation. All right, that looks awesome. 
One final thing for the color grading in the calibration tab. I do want to bring down the blue primary hue quite a bit. And this especially helps with the foreground, reintroducing some more red tones on those fishing huts. And at the same time, I'm bringing up the saturation quite a lot. So we can see those colors in the foreground some more, but also overall just add some more saturation. This is looking really, really good. All right. The final thing for the raw adjustments is the sharpening in the details tab and as always I'm bringing down the radius, then increase the details, add a bit of masking and then of course add more sharpening. Perfect. And that is the image after the raw adjustments. You can see it's looking so much better. Now the highlights do look a little blown out and for that reason as I said earlier we do have this second shot. Of course, I do want to have the same adjustments on this image, so I'm going to select both of them, right click, synchronize settings, check all and hit OK. Looking at this darker shot, you can see it's looking a little bit weird, so we are going to open up the basic tab and I just want to restore the highlights slightly. Don't want to make it look too unnatural, I'm just aiming for those windows, so we have some details in here left, just like that. And with both of those images edited, let's select both of them and hit open objects. You might think the first thing I want to do is to just fix those overexposed highlights, but I do want to first add a little bit of glow around those lights in the foreground. For that reason, I'm going to add a new layer and I'm switching the blending mode to hard light. You can see I have switched the foreground color to something very, very warm and bright to give those windows a very warm natural glow effect, just like that. And with that set up, I'm going to pick up the brush tool by pressing B and let's bring down the brush opacity. Now I'm zooming in a bit and just paint in a little bit of glow around every window. And I'm going to adjust the brush size depending on the size of the windows accordingly. And of course, the more you brush over them, the heavier the glow effect will get. So you can nicely play around for different effects. I like the glow to be a little bit heavier. So I'm going to paint over the windows quite a bit. That's looking really cool already. I think I might want to duplicate that layer to make it even stronger. So let's hit Ctrl J on it. And I think that looks great. Maybe bring down the opacity a notch, but I'm Pretty happy with how this is looking so far. Next up, let's introduce some highlights to the sky. For that I'm going to create another new layer and I'm switching the blending mode to overlay. I do want to target the stars and how do I do that? Usually I'm using the TK panel plugin. This is a paid plugin but there is a free version available. So you can do everything I'm doing here with the free version. The stars are very, very bright, almost white. This means I'm going to use a very narrow light mask, maybe light three. Let's click on it to see the mask. You can see we still have some Northern lights selected, which I don't want. So I'm going to go one step further with the lights four mask, which is looking pretty decent. And I'm going to activate the layer mask mode and click on lights four to apply this layer mask on our overlay layer. Then again, I'm grabbing the brush, but this time I'm setting the foreground color to white. I'm also making sure the opacity is set to 100%. And then I'm just going to brush over the sky like this, making the stars slightly brighter. Now, at first you might not see much difference in here. We could duplicate that layer to make it a little more visible. And at the same time, I do want to add a little glow around those stars. So let's open up the TK panel once more deactivate the layer mask thing. Again, I'm clicking on lights four. This time I'm going to make a selection by clicking on the select button. With that selection active, which is not really visible since it's a very, very tiny selection, I'm going to hit control C and control V. So on this new layer right here, we do have the brightest stars selected and I'm going to go ahead and change the blending mode to hard light. And at the same time, I'm going to filter blur Gaussian blur to add a little bit of glow around those stars. Just going to add a very low amount like this and hit OK. Now we do have selected a few areas which I don't want to have selected. So I'm going to 
click on the base image and go to select and choose sky. With that selection, I'm going back to that stars glow layer and click on the layer mask. So only the sky is affected by this glow effect. Also, I do want to mask out those northern lights on the right side. I want to keep them bright, just like that. At this point, I'm going to duplicate this layer one more time, just to have a little more heavier glow in here. We could also apply some more Gaussian blur, just like that. Okay, looking good so far. Now, let's fix those highlights in the foreground. Therefore, I'm going to the dark image, hit Ctrl A to select all and hit Ctrl C. Go to the other image and hit Ctrl V to pass it. Then we're going to make use of the TK panel yet again. And let's see. I just want to target those highlights of the windows again. So just like before, the lights for mask looks pretty good. Let's activate the layer mask mode and hit lights for. And just like that, we have nicely fixed those highlights. Of course, now the sky is affected as well, so I'm just going to brush out the mask again from this layer mask. So only really the foreground is affected here. Now zooming in, you can see how much of a difference this makes. During the raw adjustment part of this video, I was reducing the warmer highlights of the foreground. At this point, I do think I kind of miss them. So what I want to do is to create a photo filter adjustment layer. Of course, not over the whole image, but just on those highlights. So I'm going to create a clipping mask by holding down the Alt key and clicking between those two layers. So only really the highlights are affected here. Due to this change, the effect might be a little too strong. So I'm going into this adjustment layer, just bring up the density, making those warm highlights a little more visible, just like that. And at this point, we could play around with some more contrast. So let's go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer. What I don't like is the contrast right there in this area and that mountain. It looks a little bit flat, so to change that, I'm going to add some more darks, creating a point here and dragging it further to the right. And of course, we want contrast, so I'm going to create a point here and drag it upwards. Just trying to get a more natural look this way. I think this looks great. But I don't want to have it over the whole image, as I just said, so I'm going to invert the layer mask by hitting Ctrl I and with a white brush. I am going to paint back in the contrast, but let's bring down the opacity of the brush a bit. Just going to paint over the foreground right there and over the mountain. All right, that looks much, much better. Okay, then I do want to add another curves adjustment layer. And you might have noticed this mountain has a strange color cast. It is leaning somewhat more towards the red color tones. So what I want to do in this tone curve is to go to the reds channel, go to the point for the shadows and just drag it to the right a bit. You can see this will make the mountain look a little more greenish. So I'm going to go into the green channel and do the same thing here. And thus I can nicely fix that color cast. Now again, I don't want to have this over the whole image. So just like before, let's invert the layer mask by hitting Ctrl I, grab a white brush, and now just brush over that mountain. Perfect. At this point, we might want to crop the image since at the borders, it's not really sharp because I used a wide open aperture with a lens that isn't made for that. So I just want to crop it very, very slightly to kind of get rid of those unsharp borders without cropping away too much. Perfect. And let's see, maybe we could add a little more glow on those stars so let's add one more layer and again change the blending mode to hard light. Grab the brush tool, set the foreground color to white like this. And I'm going to lower the brush opacity again, zoom in once more and choose the brightest stars and then just paint in a little more glow around them. Okay, that looks pretty good, maybe a little too strong. So let's bring down the opacity of that layer. But at this point, we're done editing this landscape image. 
So I hope this wasn't too hard to follow and you could learn something new from this video. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.